brutal Barracuda, a sniper elite channel. Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm just going to be doing a quick review of the new Sniper Elite VR Winter Warrior and seeing how it stacks up against the original Sniper Elite VR. But before we jump into it, I just want to say a quick thank you to Rebellion for providing me with an early access key, enabling me to have a good play around with it prior to launch, so thank you Rebellion. I also want to give a quick spoiler warning right now, as there will be some spoilers. Now, with that out of the way, let me tell you exactly what I thought of Sniper Elite VR Winter Warrior. So once again, Rebellion have teamed up with Just Add Water to bring us another Sniper Elite VR. And once again, we play as our unnamed Italian partisan, recounting tales of his exploits during his time defending his homeland from the Nazi war machine. In Sniper Elite VR Winter Warrior, our partisan recounts his tales of discovering various Wunderwaffe, or wonder weapons, that obviously must be destroyed. The campaign consists of eight missions, with the first being the Partisan HQ training mission, just to get you up to speed on the controls and help you practice your aim at the various shooting ranges for a bit before heading into the main campaign. So, seven missions really, because the Partisan HQ firing range isn't really a mission. So, seven missions, which is a far cry from the original Sniper Elite VR, which consisted of 18 missions. This campaign has done away with the sniper nest missions of the original Sniper Elite VR and will last you only about two and a half to three hours, with each of the seven missions lasting anywhere between 15 and 30 minutes. Now that is based on me playing through it my first time on medium difficulty, so playing on hard will possibly take you a little longer, but overall it's an incredibly short game coming in at about a third of the length of the original Sniper Elite VR campaign. The game takes us to various locations such as a seaport where we have to disable some prototype naval cannon or infiltrate a villa under the cover of darkness to steal some important intel and other various Nazi facilities, nothing you haven't seen before in any typical World War II game. Although a standout moment for me was a tank battle which whilst simple enough was my most memorable moment in the entire campaign, probably because it reminded me of the Tiger tank battle in Sniper Elite 3. Much like the mainline Sniper Elite games, you have the option for the most part to play stealthily or go in guns blazing. I prefer to stealth as much as possible with my trusty well rod and the various sound masks, and then when that fails, I'll switch to guns blazing. Once again, we gain access to the various missions via our journal. This is also where we access our loadouts and the game's two new modes. New weapons are required simply by collecting them in-game, once you've done that, they will appear in your armory for you to equip to your loadout. One thing worth mentioning that will really annoy a large chunk of the Sniper Elite 5 fanbase is this game has in fact included the M1 Garand. So yeah, just thought I'd chuck that out there. The inventory system is exactly as it was in the original Sniper Elite VR, so by looking down you will see your ammo belt, you can access your rifle and your SMG over your left and right shoulder, and access to your pistols is under your armpit. There's also an ammo pouch that keeps track of your ammo and a couple of slots to hold a few grenades. It all works really well, and after a little while you can really switch between weapons quite quickly. There is a slot on your belt to hold a trip mine, but much like Sniper Elite 5, for some reason these have been removed from the campaign and are now reserved only for the new Last Stand mode. There are plenty of accessibility options to increase the ammo belt's size and position and whatnot, as well as plenty of other accessibility options including various movement options, so if you suffer from motion sickness you can have teleport movement and snap turning instead of free movement if you need it. The X-Ray Bullet Camera obviously makes a return and again is exactly the same as it was in the original Sniper Elite VR, allowing you to ride the bullet to your target, although this can be disabled if it isn't your thing. The visuals for the most part are fine, you do have the odd weird texture here and there and some character models can be a bit questionable at times, but overall it's not too bad. The game also supports standing and sitting and also features B-Haptics and ProTube VR support. 
I didn't come across many bugs in the game, certainly nothing game breaking, just a graphical glitch here and there, or a texture where you may sit and wait for it to pop in, only to realise that it has popped in. It's just a bit of a funky texture. The main one was when holding the Sten Gun magazine. It's a bit wonky, but Rebellion are aware of this one, so it will likely be fixed fairly soon. And I'm pretty sure soldiers are supposed to react when you punch them in the back of the head. <laughs> The game does come with two new modes, but will they make up for the lack of campaign? Well, the first mode is Last Stand, which if you've played Sniper Elite before, is basically survival. You have to survive waves of enemies. The furthest I managed to get was wave 11, I think, but then the Jaegers and Snipers started showing up and then it all went to hell. You really have to be quick with reloading and it can all get a bit overwhelming. But with a little bit of practice, I'm sure it'll be fine. Supply drops containing ammo and explosives come in after every five waves, although the explosives were fairly pointless, I thought. During my playthrough, I was unable to pick up a tripwire because I'd already planted one somewhere else on the map. So it seems like I only have one at a time, which was a strange design decision. Um, there's only a single map to play on as well, which is the church and graveyard reused from the original Sniper Elite VR's beheading the snake mission maybe you unlock a different map if you complete it but i gotta be honest I, I doubt it the next mode and the one i was really looking forward to the most is sniper hunt which again there is only a single map to play on and this time it's the spike in the cannons mission from the original sniper elite vr that makes a return for this mode in sniper hunt we are tasked with taking out three elite snipers but first we have to lure them out by taking out various infantry once we've taken out enough infantry, the snipers will slowly start to appear. With their comrades dropping like flies, I knew it would not be long until the sniper joined the fray. Now they are pretty lethal and can kill you in a single shot, and they're also pretty unfair at times, spotting you almost instantly. Caution is the name of the game here. Sticking your head out too far will certainly get it blown off. The snipers do relocate, although sometimes unfairly teleporting around the map. But there is a scope glint that will give away their position, giving you a chance to duck for cover. Now this is a fun mode and the snipers also spawn randomly to mix things up a bit. But with these modes only having one map each to play on, I feel we'll get pretty boring pretty fast. It was time to relocate once again. Unfortunately, there is no multiplayer or co-op modes to speak of, which is a big shame and something I would have loved to have seen in a Sniper Elite VR sequel. But honestly, what we have here in no way feels like a sequel. It feels very much like a DLC. With the exception of the two new modes, there is nothing new here. It feels and plays exactly the same as its predecessor. Nothing has been improved upon or expanded upon. It just feels the same as the original Sniper Elite VR with all the same issues. The AI is still pretty dumb and once alerted go back to normal far too quickly. The missions are still incredibly small and linear. The slow sprint speed, the terrible grenade throwing, lacklustre collectibles, inability to go prone, it all makes a return. There also isn't much in the way of interaction either. You can't open drawers or search lockers and there was a lot less sniping now that they have done away with the sniper nest missions. There are a total of four maps that have been reused from the original Sniper Elite VR. First is the Partisan HQ, which kind of makes sense, I suppose. But then the two new modes also have reused maps, as so does the final mission of the game. Also, there are very few long shots in this game. Certainly nothing longer than any shots available in the original Sniper Elite VR. But it's not all doom and gloom. Because much like the original Sniper Elite VR, the sniping feels solid. You really have to close one eye, hold your breath to steady your aim, gently squeeze the trigger instead of pulling it to keep your aim as steady as possible. Having to pull back the bolt after each round and reload your weapons, it all feels good. If you played Sniper Elite VR1, then you'll know exactly what to expect. The two new modes should help keep us busy for a little while longer. I know I'll certainly be playing more Sniper Hunt. I need to beat that on hard. Though I predict it will get pretty repetitive pretty quick due to the lack of map selection. But it's important to remember the price. £11 or $15. A tenner for more Sniper Elite VR is a bargain. Considering the original Sniper Elite VR launched for £25 and this is just £11, 
it was obvious this was always going to be a much less ambitious endeavour. But I think the biggest problem of all is the fact that this game is exclusive to Meta's Quest headsets only. Meaning if you've just spent hundreds of pounds on Sony's latest VR headset, or if you play PC VR on the many headsets available there, then you will unfortunately miss out unless you go and buy yourself another headset. I do not agree with Rebellion making any Sniper Elite game exclusive to any system. So Rebellion, stop it. Don't start this nonsense. But if you already own a Quest headset, then I do recommend this game. It's a cheap, short bit of fun. If you enjoyed the first Sniper Elite VR and want more of the same, then you will probably enjoy this. For the price of a tenner, it's absolutely worth it. But if you don't own a Quest headset, it's certainly not worth rushing out to buy one just to play this. So overall, I'm a little bit disappointed, but when you look at the price point, you can't expect too much. If you enjoyed the original Sniper Elite VR, you will likely get a kick out of this, as long as you go in knowing that this is a much smaller experience. I really hoped Rebellion and Just Add Water would have improved and expanded upon the original Sniper Elite VR. But aside from Last Stand and Sniper Hunt being a welcome addition, what we have here is basically just more of the same. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but I would have personally preferred to pay more to get a proper sequel. Maybe with some multiplayer modes. After playing Sniper Hunt, I can't help but feel that a 1v1 Sniper Hunt-esque multiplayer mode would have been a right treat, as would being able to play co-op with a friend in Last Stand. But, long story short, if you have a Quest headset and enjoyed the original Sniper Elite VR for the price of a tenner, you can't go wrong here. It's just more of the same in a smaller package. If you don't have a Quest headset, I recommend just waiting and hoping that this meta exclusive is simply a timed exclusive. Okay guys, thanks for sticking around until the end. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to support the channel, don't forget to give the video a like. It really does help the channel to grow. This is a dedicated Sniper Elite channel, so hit the subscribe button to be kept up to date on all things Sniper Elite. And if you want to show even more support, you might want to consider hitting the join button and becoming a member of the channel and joining the ranks of my elite spotters here at the end of each video. Either way, thanks so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Brutal Barracuda, a sniper elite channel.